Hey guys, packing here. And today we are gonna be making watermelon soup, or should I say summer melon soup. And it's gonna be consist of using just very ingredients um, from the household. And the main ingredient is discarded watermelon pieces. Now, you wanna make sure your hands are clean. It's all very clean. And you want to wash, wash the watermelon pieces too as well. But these are leftover watermelon pieces after you cut them up and serve it to uh, family. And uh, this is whatever's left. So I'm going to be taking them all out. I've just made my first batch and I love it. So I'm going to try and make one again. As you can tell, they are still firm. They are not breaking apart. This is fresh. So this is, this is fresh. We're gonna wash this too. I'm gonna find this in the bag. I remember you could always cut this out because the whole point is using this part. So what you do first is that you want to um, shave this all off. We're gonna be peeling this first. Starting with the first one. Okay, that's that. You want to rinse it once more. Let's put it against the peeler. Um, what we have over here is just two um, baby peppers, um, basil, and, uh, and fresh wild parsley. So this is sweet basil. You want to grab a knife. You want to see this, this end. And you want to Seems uh, out of place. I'm just gonna take that out and throw it away. All right, now let's begin cutting. So what I do is that I usually cut it uh, cubed. So I cut it from the bottom side. Like that. And it's easier to cook. So you wanna. I'm gonna take your time with the knife. So we're gonna have to uh, heat up our, our stove. We're gonna preheat our stove to high, high as possible. Because you wanna, you wanna make sure you're gonna heat the oil. You can't just heat up the stove by itself. This is electric stove. This is 
takes a while to heat up. So I'm gonna take some extra virgin olive oil. Lay that down a little bit, there you go. I think maybe about like, like a half a cup. And uh, let that let that heat up until it's nice and uh, and watery. Because why not stick? Okay, that would be the surface. Surface on the it's wet. which I'll be using at the very end. And I am using onions, which I cut in half. So half onion is great. I'll be putting that later. So first, the, the watermelon comes in because the melon is really hard. And you want to make sure you get it cooked through. Let it, let it cook before a bit. So it's not there yet. Give it like about a minute or two, I'll be fine. That, uh, let that let it heat up a little bit more. So <clears throat> first you want to put in the melon first, then you gotta cut up some onions and uh, the half onion. Then you wanna use minced up garlic afterwards. So that's where you wanna <clears throat> come in. And there you go. Perfect. Now you wanna lower down the heat. Um, for the electric stove, I put up to down to uh, from high heat to seven. All right, this is why the apron is on. I would use a, uh, a ladle, a plastic ladle, for a nice slick uh, pot. And mix it around a little bit, just so the oil gets to know the, the watermelon. All right, so let that cook. Well, I'm gonna go back. Cooked onions. Let me chop them first. Okay, so the while while the watermelon is cooking, we're gonna be chopping up some a half onion. All right, and keep in mind you gotta worry about the time as the watermelon is cooking right now. You wanna cook the onion next. Normally you want to do, you know, people like to do it prep time, you know, cut the onions first and then put it aside. I like to do it the last minute because I want it fresh. Because I don't want it to be tainted by the air. This was in the fridge. You can use a whole onion if you want. I mean, there's no, there's no specific directions like the portion sizes of onions you want to put in. Uh, you can put in one whole onion or half an onion. It's up to you. Now 
then it's gonna go in the pot. So you want to let it cook about a good five to ten minutes. I think, yeah, it should be a while. Or enough where you can see that it is a bit translucent. Um, right now, it's not there yet. Um, but when it's about to be a little bit translucent, you want to add in the garlic so you don't burn the garlic. You want to add a little bit of salt and pepper, uh, but keep in mind that you don't want to add in the salt. Uh, you don't want to add too much salt because you're going to have the, the tomato, diced tomatoes in a can that's going to have salt in there. So you don't want to uh, over salt it. Over salt. That's oregano. Smells really good. The onions work very well with the with the watermelon. It makes it sweeter. Okay. I cut off some peppers. So what you do is you're gonna. I'm going to take out the seeds. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's all going to get cooked through. So it's getting a little, almost translucent for the onions. We're gonna add in the garlic. I load it down to six. So what you do is you take the garlic, I take whatever is left over here. I'm gonna put like maybe one, two, three, four, and make it five. I like mine a little bit, a little bit of garlic. I like the taste of it. Now the easiest way for me to peel the garlic is to take a jar, drop it in, and shake it. That way the jar, the glass, is going to hit at the lid constantly, causing the shell of the garlic to break off. Now you gotta take the pieces. You know, you, some some of them you have to be shelled, but 
you know, so fast. And so you got the majority of the garlic. Add the soup. Now the garlic takes, takes a lot of form, a lot of shape. Look at that. Almost translucent. I want to add a little bit of red wine. So it can bring all the flavor back in. Let it mix with the fruits. So basically you want to treat this watermelon like a turnip because they have the same density as when you cut it, it feels really hard. So it does take time to cook. All right, let that cook about eight more minutes. I mean, no, make it like two minutes, two minutes tops. On uh, lowest settings under six, medium to, between medium to medium high, but on a six setting. And now you wanna grab the diced tomatoes. So now we're gonna be this, we're done with the garlic. That's gonna be saved. It's gonna be put back in the fridge. You wanna use diced tomatoes with tomato juice. That's gonna create our soup. Soup sauce. You don't need to add in the the beef broth or chicken stock. This is all vegetable. Okay. Want the whole can. Ooh, that's good. But you wanna 
let it cook because it does have that candy flavor. And you want to add in some water, perhaps halfway from the can. And take a filtered water, about half a can. You want to make sure you get some good tomato juice and pour it in there. Let it go. Now we gotta add in the potatoes. And so we gotta go back. We gotta peel some potatoes. So while we kinda let that sit, and we're gonna peel them. And I'll be right back when it's peeled. Okay, we are back. And the potatoes are already peeled. And we're gonna cut it into cube slices. That's three potatoes. Okay, while well, this thing is boiling, we add the potatoes and let that mingle. So a nice taste of the melon. potatoes and the garlic and the tomato juice. Let that mingle. And that starch is gonna help thicken up the sauce. I mean the saucy the saucy soup texture. That's what we wanted. Okay, then you want to add a little maybe you know, a little bit more water. Like that. Add just a little bit more water. And we're gonna add one of our favorite, one of my favorites for soup, goji, goji fruit. Gojis are dried fruits that are great for soup and they have this nice little uh, aroma and texture to the soup. So you wanna add like a couple handfuls of those. Like about this much, maybe more. You know, let that mingle. That's about it. And you want to add in the herbs so that it cooks with with the soup. So I add in some basil. The basil, dry basil, gives it a nice um, earthy bitterness. Um, of the soup. Okay, then we add some oregano. Like this. Some oregano. And we're gonna add in a little bit of um, rosemary. Just a sprinkle. Just a sprinkle of rosemary. Just a little bit. There you go. Um, And 
those are your dry herbs. Okay. You gotta taste it. Splash more pepper. There we go. Oh, that's good. That's right around salt. That's good. Okay, so we're gonna let these uh, ingredients, we're gonna let these ingredients mingle. We're gonna, we're gonna cover this. Nope, sorry about that. And uh, again, you wanna let that sit there for f uh, three hours so that the watermelon gets softened. You want the melon to um, get to know the flavor of the, the whole tomato and gonna have that sweetness being um, being leached out to the soup so all the flavors will be incorporated with the watermelon with the tomatoes it's not overpowering the flavors that's in the soup so so yeah after after this is all done you're gonna after the three hours you want to add in the basil uh, the fresh basil that I got from the garden so you're gonna add that basil last um, after three or so hours and we're gonna add a little bit of parsley uh, last so we'll be right back after three hours right now it is 7:33. I'll be back around like 10 yeah I'll be back around 10 okay it is now 9:27. I think it's about ready. Okay. There you go. Look at that. Two hours. I think it's about five. Let's give that a try. Potato. Hmm. Watermelon. Hmm. I'm gonna take one of the my mom's homemade chili garlic sauce. Take a little bit of it. It's really spicy, so just wanna take. like that much let that spice up and then I'm gonna cut up some some sweet basil, fresh basil, and parsley. I'll be adding some spring onion. Fresh. And I'll be adding the 
this in, but I'm gonna make sure I turn off, turn off the stove. So we add this in. and let it sit for 10 minutes. Hmm. 